I don't know if you knew this. Boca Chota. What? <laughs> Did I say it right? Yeah, Boca Chota. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yankees have won 10 in a row. I know. And they're four games out of first yeah, place. Yeah, I know. They, they, they came out of nowhere. I, they did. I keep emailing my dad and just saying, shh. Yeah. <laughs> because and everyone wrote them off because there was no reason to think they would be good. Oh, we were having one of the worst years I've ever seen. So, so the fact that things are clicking right now, it's kind of like this tenuous little thing I'm holding. But Mike and I are going to go. That's what the new, these are brand new Yankee hats mm -hmm. that I just got for him and I today. These are the Looks authentic. like you rubbed it in dog shit. Oh, wait, no. that's just the logo. <gasps> Stupid reaction to it's of Corbin. Boston Red Sox. Anyways, who's in first place? I know we're not. But, you're, uh, you're, not <laughs> you're not even ahead of the Yankees. <laughs> we were. You were, before. but then you started anyways, with Red Sox. Anyways, today we're doing a movie review of the 1963 what? Bengali film what? by a little known director, Sachidich Rukhai. And I thought that's a it is. It's a Bengali pronunciation. I, I'm glad that oh, hi. we've been doing this on our channel because if without us, no one would know of this man. Yeah, he's you know. Yeah, we're doing a service. We really are. Uh, it's our goal to help these lesser known artists become more established. I think it's our sixth. We got three, right? Then we got the one after that with the wife. Yeah. Then we got wait Nayakan. Or whatever the one on the train was. The hero. Yes. This is six. Was there another one? Obviously. If you count, if you count the short film. The short film. Two. But yeah, it's a short that, film. That's a short film. No. So I think this is our sixth um, Sachin Rai film. Anyways, yes. And he only has seven. So and kind of, it's that's obviously sad. That's a joke. He, he doesn't only have we'll only We only have one more to watch. <laughs> it was a joke. Uh, this is all jokes. Free. <laughs> but idea. it's uh, directed and partially written because uh, it's based off of, uh, I believe, a, a short story. Correct. And, and the music. The music as well. But I think it's that's pretty common for him. Except for, obviously, when he used uh, Ravi Shankar oh, for yeah. uh, the Opu. Uh, starring Anil Chatterjee. Uh, say Lots him. of Bengalis. Let's say that. Madhabi Mukherjee. Jaya Bakshan. Uh, a very young, <laughs> very young Jaya, Jaya Bakshan. I didn't... Until I looked at it, I didn't know it was her. Yeah, who was Jaya Baduri. Yes. There. Uh, but, and then uh, a whole bunch of other Banerjees, Chatterjees. Oh, yes. Uh, a whole bunch. Was Indrani in this one? She was. <laughs> okay. We watched this together. Well, I assume you watched most of the Bengali ones. Most of the Bengali ones. She uh, absolutely wants together. to watch. Yes. But, yes. Anyways, uh, obviously, Hunter Spence Fall Review. It came out in 1963. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Watch Come it. back. It's actually on HBO for us, even though he didn't get to watch it there. Well, yeah, uh, you can rent it on Amazon, yeah, but it it's on for free on HBO. Uh, it's all they have actually his entire collection on HBO. Wow, the whole thing, the whole his whole catalog. Wow, I don't, I don't know why. In terms of, it's not a, a not a big thing for HBO. So I don't know, but I love it. I'm not saying I don't love it. I just it was. Curious to I me. I bet there's a relationship between the Film Preservation Society and, and Scorsese HBO. and HBO Maybe and all things. that. Yeah. Anyways, but once again, 100 percent spoiler review. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Come back. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, I'll just cut to the chase, as they say. He hated it, and he hates Bengalis. That's right. Um, I've I've added it to my list of favorite films of all time. Okay, but where does it stack in him? Um. Because I knew you would like it. I, yeah. I had no doubt. Yeah. It actually... So Opu is a standalone kind of thing that's... It's kind of like Jaws for Steven Spielberg. It's the thing that broke him through. Yeah. And he's... You know, Spielberg's made better films than Jaws. But Jaws is... He, you don't have Spielberg without Jaws. And I feel yeah. like about Opu. And there's a lot of things he does in Opu that you, you see. But like... The hero... Mm -hmm. So different. So different, and the maturity in what he was doing. Yeah. This one, for me, is actually more than the hero. Yeah, so this is your favorite now. This, this after... Opu's got that special place, and I could never put anything above it. Yeah. Because it's like his great work, like Anya Rog's Gangs of Wasper, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I have so much that I absolutely adore about this movie that yeah. it's, it's it's hard not to make it my big yeah i i absolutely loved this film i think it was a simple complex story great way to uh, say it. a simple complex story but 
almost perfect in every way. Yeah. In terms of... Uh, There's only one, I have only one, and I'll say it in a second, I have only one thing about it I didn't like. Yeah, I mean too. Um, but uh, the fact that, like, they're just everything from obviously the direction to the writing to... It, 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 sh it shocked me in, in terms of, it, it did stuff I, I wasn't expecting. Especially for 1963. Yeah, to do. Characters surprised me in terms of, obviously, you know, this is, I, right when it started, I'm like, okay, we're gonna have a bunch of mansplaining, misogynistic men. Patriarchal. Patriarchal, garbage, um, right. you know, uh, men that are just too prideful. But he kind of turned it on its head a bunch of times sure with, with them in their arcs, a bunch of different men. Sure and then did. obviously some that you thought were going to be great and then turned out to be a different way. And, and obviously her story and, and her strength I thought was absolutely incredible. So I, it, hats off to uh, Sacha Rai. And I know this was based on a short story, but obviously he, he fleshed it out even more. Yeah. Uh, and did a great job in, in kind of captivating you for two hours, 15 minutes. Uh, in a black and white film from 1963 that's still relevant today for a lot of like it absolutely for a lot is. of people it absolutely is yeah. it's relevant and this is one of the things i love about his films and most of the films that we've seen that are bengali or even in the malayalam uh, films that we've seen of recent date that we've just raved about are the full immersion into the culture where you may miss some nuances if you're not familiar with the culture but the predominant aspect of it is the human condition mm -hmm. and universal truths. Yeah. And I, there's so much to talk about when yeah. it comes to the story, the script. I, I have a very um, neat perspective in this because there's no culture in India that I'm more familiar with than Bengali yeah. because of Indrani. Yeah. Yeah. So the, there's such a special connection I have where I can get some of the things that aren't even inside jokes, they're just endearing things. So for example, when they're making fish and rice, I mean, I can't tell you how many times Indrani has shown me her dinner and it's fish and rice and she jokes about the fact or it's a fish head and they serve it a fish head and like, babe, look, a fish head. Or when the little boy has, his, when the daddy comes back and he asks for his daddy's bus tickets, I saw in Indrani's face on the, through the phone something uh, she, rec not that I recognized, something was going on there. And she said, I used to do that with my daddy all the time. He'd bust to work and whenever he got home, I wanted to see his tickets. Why? It was just this neat thing, like the adventure that he went on. It's a touch on where oh. dad had gone. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? That's cool. I didn't so that. those little aspects and hearing the horns honking, because I'm, I'm always hearing that in the background on the phone with her, I have that, that little slice of it that adds a level of endearment. But other than that, you don't need that for this. It, it, I, the thing I'm most astonished by, and I'm astonished by a lot, that a film in 1963... A Bengali film makes a woman the anchor and the hero of your story. Hollywood is still fighting for women to have roles like that. Yeah. And here he's like, not just making a woman the star, but the issues that pertain to the woman and the difference. We can go on and on about yeah, she, progressive versus conservatism. Yeah. yeah but the, incredible. Let's talk about her. I thought she did a. a fantastic job and as well as such a rise writing of her yes i thought it was it was a great scene when you know um he was kind of weary of her because you know he found her lipstick right mm -hmm. and you know you know that you knew what was going on in his mind even sure. though they didn't tell you what was going on in his sure. mind he was like what is she really doing mm -hmm. like yeah is she, is she one of those people and then he heard this whole conversation and she was making up stuff about her husband to make to make sure his pride wasn't hurt right. by what happened and, to and, him and his image, and even though she, he wasn't there, right? And like he gets he, to overhear it. Yeah, he literally he, she would have never known about this conversation, obviously, unless he was there, like he was. But like she didn't know he was there. She didn't have to do any of that. And she did it because she loves him. Yeah, and she knew, even if she disagrees with a lot of the patriarchal aspects that he got from his dad, which I love the complexity of her husband. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, her husband or the dad? The, the complexity of the husband. The dad uh, wasn't complex. Yeah. He was he was pretty yeah. straightforward. But he did surprise me, though, when he did come back and he was like... Because I wasn't expecting that no, yet. No, I wasn't. I was not expecting that yet. No, and there were several times where I laughed. He was saying things. And I, I said to Andrani at one point, I went, oh, just die already. <laughs> <laughs> because he really represented, and it's still around. Yeah. He represented the mindset. It's always the older generation. It the is. Generation. There's something that happens... In people, there's a physical thing that happens, and it is allegory, allegorical 
to what actually is happening to them in, in just life where they become rigid, they become less flexible, they become set. And I understand when people have had a hard life and things don't go their ways, they can become pessimistic and it, it creates a, a deep friction, especially when family is so important in India. But I love not only that moment, but we'll jump around from the acting and the writing and the cinematography. Two of my favorite moments in the cinematography, one of them was in this. And it was that moment where the camera goes from her talking and what we got was this weird split screen reflection of her talking and her husband listening to it. And then he gets up and walks away because he's realizing, well, when I'm not around, she's loving me and protecting me. I don't need to be yeah, concerned about I shouldn't about be that. such an asshole. Yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah, he, he had such an interesting story because right when it started, I was like, you're a pig. Right. You. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it, it, it still bothered me because obviously at the beginning, um, she said something. She was like, you get upset when your chai isn't ready when you get home. Right. And that stuck with him. Like, that's your that's your character right there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still not fully sold. And I'm hoping he, he kind of, uh, you know, turned over a new leaf. And he's not a dick when his chai isn't ready when he gets home. Uh, but that's, that whole thing where I thought he was just going to be this guy. Right. And the woman's place is in the home. Yes. Right. And then he, he begrudgingly at times kind of grew into a better person. He had a struggle. Yeah, he was definitely the, the man that doesn't like if his wife makes more than him. Right. Doesn't like- Very, his, very fragile ego. Yeah, uh, and so a bunch of that patriarchal stuff that's still in society today, that one's never made any sense to me, the one like women making more than men. If like, you know, like, Well, it stems it stems from this, this ages long expectation of the roles people play and you shouldn't get out of that role or you screw up society. Mm -hmm. And one of uh, my second favorite thing he did cinematography wise. Well, I can tell you my shot. And it might be the same shot. It's it's with him, the husband. Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. So by the bed? Yes. With the cigarette? Yes. Oh, right when that happened, me and my wife were, that is pretty. <laughs> Well, it was one of the most pretty black and white pretty, shots I've ever seen. And it was brilliant because in the moment he did it, I said, that the, sh the shot came up and I said to Andrani, I said, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was just a, a and I, gorgeous I, shot. I said, first of all, it's gorgeous, but look at what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's showing you the two sides of this husband right now. The shadow represents the legalistic, patriarchal, rigid part of him. And then the other fluid part of him is the progressive, modern, the real guy in there that's really fighting against kind of the Jekyll and Hyde. Yep. And he sh that's one of my favorite things about Satyajit Rai is he understands that, that cinema is first and foremost a visual format. Yeah. And as a director's medium, you have the power to say more with an image that you show, you don't tell. Yep. He absolutely, name all the directors that have been breakthrough genius mavericks, Charlie Chaplin, and then go to Cecil B. DeMille, and then go to Alfred Hitchcock, and the list goes on. He is absolutely in that list of names. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, he, he's absolutely brilliant. Everything he's done that we've seen is incredible, especially for the time that it comes out, that he's pushing boundaries not only with story, but with, with the way he does film. Um, and it's... He, he tells, and that's something I've noticed, he tells very progressive stories, but in, what, 1960s? Yeah. Like, like a time that people weren't telling these style of stories or the, these messages that they were trying to get across. Right, but what's it, what I've learned is very interesting is he's very much a product of Bengal. Mm -hmm. Because the, the focus on being educated, the focus, I mean, it's kind of stereotypical. Books, glasses, and cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That's like the stereotypical Bengali man. Be really, really educated, and you smoke, and you got glasses, and it con conveys the level of education you have. And being extremely progressive and on the edge of the evolution of the human being in culture, in art, in yeah. literature. Yeah. And he's very much a product of that, but he's also a product of the fact that he very early on in his life was so in love with international cinema and the world. He, he thought internationally. Yeah. And it shows. Now, uh, the um, Jaya. Yeah. That's a 
she showed great promise at yeah. that age, man. She did a great job. Yeah, she did a fantastic job, um, even though she was in it for very little. Yeah. We, I think we saw her first in Cholet. Uh, that's where we, we, we had first seen her. I didn't even realize it was her until we're watching it, and Indrani said, you know that's Mrs. Bakshat. Yeah. I said, oh my goodness, it is, isn't yeah. it? I wouldn't have picked up if, if I didn't, at, at the end, look up IMDb, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that was Jai Bakshat, <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I thought she did great. And now, I thought did a, a super fantastic job of showing the complexities yeah. uh, while showing one side of the patriarchal, um, egotistical asshole fully man. Be fully believed the family fully believed, was a family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then also showing his loving, supporting side <sighs> and his growth. The, I thought it was a great ending scene. The end. Uh, where, where they came together. Uh, after, which I'll, I'll talk about the, the boss, which I thought was a great character. A really could have been a throwaway. Yeah. Because but it was an important part of the story. Very important because, one, it showed that this this character who you thought was going to be this great, nice um, character that, that was going to kind of come help in and help the family, turned out to be, uh, basically, he was a racist. Right? He was about, about uh, an Anglo-Indian is what they called her, right? Right, but... Didn't play him. No, didn't play him like he, that. Which is amazing for that day and age that he wasn't. Uh, he was a very compassionate, kind person who actually had a very prejudicial side to him. Mm -hmm. And even when he starts to, you know, at the very end, I love the final line when he calls out her name and he says, "Mrs. Mazunder," you know, he's gotten mad yeah. and saying, "You stepped out of line." But it kept getting dark too. It okay. did. It kept it getting did. darker, which is such. And a when she leaves, you see the sense of regret he feels of what just happened. Yeah. He didn't want to lose her. No. And then that last, I can't say enough about the last scene because here's, here's the husband, right? Mm -hmm. Right on the cusp of this change and he's going to be challenged. And I was rooting for him. I'm like, please don't be a dick to her. Come to her side, rally with her. Don't say, don't you realize what you've done? Mm -hmm. What kind of pressure was on the family now? And when he finally says what he says, it was, number one, it was believable the way it was written and done. Mm -hmm. And then I love when he says, aren't you scared? And she says, feel my hand. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, out loud, I went, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, I loved the ending. Um, it, I thought it was, it was great. It was complex. It was also a beautiful shot there at the end that he, oh, that he gave of the big city of the Bengal big with the light in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was great. Uh, I didn't love the Anglo Indian girl. That was my only, that, that's the one thing I don't like about the film. She's a white girl, technically. What is it? Uh, what is it? I don't know. Uh, what is it? She wasn't garbage. Right, exactly. But she wasn't at the level of everyone else. That's exactly uh, what it was. And so it's, she was fine. That was like, that was my, But the others were great. Yeah, that was my biggest gripe with it. But that was the first time at this time that I'd se we had seen, I think, a white person in a film. Right, really? Yeah. From the classics that we've seen? Yeah. Not really, and I, I'm i assuming she was, uh, I think she, she was, she was born Anglo. in, in India, right? Uh -huh. But she was like left over, like because of the British that came over. Yeah, her family's well, here now, and this is where she lives. Yeah, and Johnny told me it was very common when the British were here, uh, and especially she's specifically re referring to Bengal, that uh, a, a British soldier or a British man that was there would marry a Bengali girl, mm -hmm. and their child would be Anglo Indian. Anglo Indian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought, I, th I thought, even though I didn't love her performance, I, I thought I loved the idea of adding to that. Uh, part and that t style of racism from an Indian mm -hmm. uh, into the story. Me too. Because it, it it touched on something that you know we haven't really seen in film even now <laughs> about the 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 white people that live there and what the relationship is to some of the people there. Correct. Uh, and that obviously most people like her accepting and and loving and treating her just like another person, but this other guy just has prejudice just because. Yes. They were left over from the British. Yeah. Um, and so it shows a, a really complex side. Um, and then sh shows, obviously, this this housewife who is not used to the big city, showing all this new stuff. I love the scene where she found the lipstick, but then also when she found the sunglasses, she got the sunglasses. She looked great in the sunglasses. She did. Uh, she was very fashionable. Exploring all this new stuff. And yeah. they, they handled everything. Sacha handled everything so well. Like when she threw out the lipstick, she was like, do whatever you want. Just... Don't misunderstand what I'm doing. Exactly. And I was like, that's, that was great. It wasn't a it, big fight. It wasn't anything. She was just like, you know, that's not, you know, no. that's not me. You know, there were, what went through my mind, they're very, very different films, but there's one similarity that kept, that, that her performance and this film reminded me of. Mm -hmm. And it was, 
I felt there was in this character and in her performance, there was a similar strength, commitment to core values and morality, mm -hmm. commitment to do what needs to be done and not be controlled by patriarchy and everything else. Uh, I kept being reminded of Mother India. Yeah, I a can lot. see that. Absolutely. Just that, that sense of this strong woman with incredible, and she was always so optimistic. Um, I fully believed their relationship. I love the tenderness she expressed to her husband when she was talking to him when they were in bed and she's just smelling his neck and kissing his shoulder. Uh, I fully believe that these two were a couple. And though I didn't uh, empathize with the patriarchal side he got from his dad, mm -hmm. I did empathize with the struggle that a man would have who's torn. Especially but, at that time. At, at that time. Yeah. And love that he cited. It's it's just a, that last shot yeah. of him walking side by side with his wife, um, and him fully embracing. Basically, what it, what the film basically says is embrace modernity. Yeah. Embrace the evolution of humanity. Yeah. And where we're going as a society, and ends with an optimistic note that the, the old ways are going to slowly fade, and the new is going to survive. Also, I want to talk about the score, even though it was a very simplistic score, I thought it was nice and it, it, it added um, to the simplicity of the film. Yes. Um, the, simple, the simple, complex story of the film. Yes. Uh, it wasn't overpowering. It wasn't uh, anything that was like um, over the top, but it, was, it just added a nice, when it, whenever it was there, because a lot of times it wasn't, uh, it added, and I thought he well, did a great job with it. That's one of my favorite things about Sachi Jirai, I was saying this to Indrani in the car, <coughs> talking about the film, and I said, he knows how to let a movie breathe. Yeah. He does what Michael Jackson referred to in concerts as let it sizzle. Mm -hmm. So if you watch Michael in rehearsal for some things, the band would try to go into something and he'd stop and he'd say, no, 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 we gotta let that sit. Let it sizzle, don't end it. It doesn't need to end right there. And he loves to just let a moment like, when she first puts the lipstick on and she's looking in the mirror, he's fine with just letting it sit there for 30 seconds while she's looking at herself. Mm -hmm. And just let it be with no score. And even in the dialogue, no one's talking rapid fire. Mm -hmm. It's just very natural. Somebody says something, they may take a minute to think about it and respond because he lets life breathe in these moments and he doesn't feel the need to entertain anybody. He just feels the need to be believable and real. Yeah. Uh, that's just great filmmaking. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, what should be our next such ride? We're going to watch well, them all. We've only got one left, remember? Yeah, only, he's only did seven. He's yeah. like Quentin Tarantino. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what should, he has a bunch uh, that we will get Bring to. Bring them on, man. Uh, we, there's so many that we haven't got to yet because every single time we do one, there's always a bunch of recommendations of the next one. And we'll, Madabi Mukherjee. Yes, Madabi Mukherjee. I love her acting. Uh, I know he, because I know one that a lot of people love and that's always on his list of like his best is like The Music Room. I hear a lot about that one. I hear it's really good. I know, I heard one, I don't know the name, but he has like a, almost like a thriller. I think it'd be right, really yeah, interesting I to, see that. to see a Satchit Rai thriller. Yes. Um, so let us know what you think the next Satchit Rai film, or it's Rai, right? Or am I saying it? It's funny. I know there's when two people, ways, but. When people pronounce his name the proper way, like Indrani will say Satchit Rai. But when they just say his last name, they'll say Ray. Oh, really? Yeah, a Ray film. And then if you pronounce the whole name, it's Satchit Rai. It's very interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, let us know what the next Satchit Rai film should be down.